This video was made possible by Mizizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit MiziziShop.com for more information. A critical moment is at hand for Africa's oil producing nations as they grapple with the decision to establish the continent's first ever energy bank. This ambitious project, fueled by a promising initial investment of 5 billion US dollars, aims to transform Africa's energy landscape. However, the path forward is not without hurdles. A major bone of contention has emerged between these nations. The question of where to house the bank's headquarters, potentially sparking a tense competition that could delay or even derail this groundbreaking initiative. And this competition is already underway. Nigeria, which made the first bid to host the financial institution, is now facing resistance from a coalition of African countries who are each lobbying to house the bank's headquarters in the territories. What is this African energy bank all about? And why is the location of its headquarters such a contentious issue? In today's video, we will offer deep insight into these questions and many more. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. Nigeria is facing mountain opposition from neighbors and other African countries in its bid to host the headquarters of the African Energy Bank, a proposed effort to assist investment in the continent's hydrocarbon infrastructure. The final decision on the location of the new institution is expected by the end of March 2024, and there has been some intense lobbying in the lead up to that decision. A coalition, including Ghana, Egypt, South Africa, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and Algeria has reportedly formed in strong opposition to Nigeria's ambitions to host the financial institution. These nations are the ones engaging in intense lobbying among significant stakeholders entrusted with deciding the bank's headquarters location. Apart from the aforementioned countries, other countries that will be participating in decision-making at the end of March 2024 include Angola, Cameroon, the Republic of Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Libya, Niger Republic, and Senegal, while Venezuela is an honorary member. The African Energy Bank Initiative, a brainchild of the African Petroleum Producers Organization and the African Export Import Bank or Afri Exim Bank, is set to revolutionize Africa's energy sector. It is also a sign of the growing desire among African countries to have powerful, home-based multilateral financial institutions that can help with debt and development finance to balance the current global financial architecture that disproportionately disadvantages African nations, perpetuating a cycle of poverty and hindering their economic development. During the just-ended 37th Ordinary Session, of the Assembly of the Heads of State and Government of the African Union held from February 17 to February 18, 2024. Ghana's President Nana Akufado, Kenyan leader William Ruto, Zambia's Hakende Hichelima reiterated such sentiments. The three leaders delivered compelling calls for the establishment of an African Central Bank, highlighting the inequalities inherent in the global financial architecture asserting that it disproportionately disadvantages Africa and perpetuates its economic struggles. They argue that Africa's economic trajectory cannot be dictated by systems designed without its best interest in mind, and thus advocated for the creation of financial institutions like the African Central Bank and the African Energy Bank, tailored to the unique needs and challenges of the continent. The African Energy Bank in particular aims to bridge the funding gap for African oil and gas development by specifically targeting projects shunned by international lenders due to anxiety surrounding the energy transition to renewables. By financing these projects, the bank aims to increase energy production across the continent, which could bring multiple benefits. Increased energy access could improve living standards, create jobs in the energy sector, and spare economic growth across Africa. 
Additionally, the bank acknowledges the need for a sustainable energy future and may allocate resources for technical support and development of renewable energy sources alongside its focus on oil and gas. The African Petroleum Producers Organization has established strict criteria that interested host countries must satisfy before the bank's headquarters can be established anywhere on the continent. These criteria include having accessible and easy air travel connections from across the continent, as well as essential amenities like hospitals and educational institutions. Additionally, hopeful nations must be signatories to the bank's charter, prepared to offer a suitable building for its headquarters and maintain a clean financial record with the organization. But why is the location of the African Energy Bank's headquarters such a contentious issue? This stems from a complex interplay of geopolitical, economic, and strategic considerations among African nations. Nigeria's bid to host the institution reflects its status as a major player in the continent's energy sector given its significant hydrocarbon resources and infrastructure. However, opposition from neighboring and rival countries such as Ghana, Egypt, South Africa, Benin, Côte d'Ivoire, and Algeria underscores broader geopolitical rivalries and interests. These opposing nations may perceive Nigeria's bid as an attempt to consolidate its influence and leverage within the energy sector, potentially to the detriment of our own interests. Moreover, the headquarters' location symbolizes more than just administrative convenience. It represents a strategic foothold in shaping regional energy policies, attracting investment, and exerting influence over the continent's energy landscape. Hence, the decision on the bank's headquarters' location carries significant implications for power dynamics, economic opportunities, and regional cooperation in African energy sector, leading to intense lobbying and opposition among stakeholders vying to advance their respective agendas. Despite this reality, some leading figures in Nigeria's energy sector believe the country would and should win the bid to host the Africa's Energy Bank's headquarters. Indeed, Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Senator Heineken Lokobiri, revealed that the country has made concessions to other nations in the past and therefore reserves the right to have the bank situated in its territory. Senator Heineken Lokobiri pointed out that the African Petroleum Producers Association itself should have ordinarily been headquartered in Nigeria, but that the country conceded it to Congo. We have made concessions to them in the past. We left it for Congo. We were almost getting it, but former President Muhammad Buhari said, leave it for them. In fact, everything was ready for Nigeria, but President Buhari in his wisdom said, look, let's give it to Congo. So I believe that other countries will pay us back. Nigeria has always conceded, so let them concede to us this time around, because this bank is so fundamental, he said. The only way we cannot be held back is to optimize the potential that we have in the oil and gas industry and our inability to access finance. If we have access to financial investing, we continue to invest just like the West did, he added. However, Nigeria's Farouk Ibrahim, who heads the African Petroleum Producers Association, came out to warn his country about the dangers of sitting back and expecting the location of the bank's headquarters to come on a platter of gold because it is Africa's largest country. According to Mr. Ibrahim, if Nigeria wants the bank's headquarters in its territory, it needs to sit up and show commitment and determination to get. Your perspective matters. Do you think the headquarters of the African Energy Bank should be situated in Nigeria because it is Africa's largest country and one of the leaders in the energy sector? If not, which other countries do you think should be considered for the bank's headquarters? Share your insights and thoughts in the For continued updates on global affairs and diplomatic developments, be sure to subscribe to the new African channel. Stay informed, stay engaged. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to bringing you more insightful content in the future.